Welcome to the Bronx Legacy Pioneers Oral History Initiative, a part of the Bronx Latino History Project. Today is Thursday, December 21, 2023. I am Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian for the Bronx County Historical Society. And I will co-interview the oral history with Michelle Jordan, the creator of this initiative. <laughs> we are joined by Miguel Angel Amadeo, a Bronxite, a Puerto Rican native, and a composer, songwriter, and owner of Casa Amadeo, Antigua Casa Hernandez, at his music store located at 786 Prospect Avenue in the heart of the South Bronx. Thank you, Miguel, for inviting us here today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, this is uh, El Negrito de Vicenta, Miguel Angel Amadeo. When I got to New York, the first thing that happened, I was going to my name was changed to Mr. Miguel because my teacher had problems trying to say Miguel. So, you know, there were Puerto Ricans and uh, all them, the Ricans in my classroom. And he asked you know, Mr. Brady, anybody could tell me, how do you say uh, Miguel? In English. Oh, well, that's Mike. Mike Amaro, Miguel Angel is Mike. So from there on, my friends in the classroom started calling me Mike Amaro. So I went from Mike, Miguel Angel, and Mike Amaro. I've been Mike Amaro for the last 74 years. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We like to start our oral histories uh, out by asking you about your family history, background. Where were your parents from? Talk to us a little bit well, about each. From Tualta, Puerto Rico. Mario Piña de Tualta, my father, uh, Alberto Díaz Mareo, another good, very good composer in Puerto Rico. Uh, he came to New York in 1927 to study medicine. And it so happened that when he was, the guy that was uh, putting, the, putting the money was his father, who was uh, Dr. Jesus Maria Mareo from Bayamon, and uh, he died while father was uh, studying medicine. So he went to Puerto Rico to bury his father and try to get some of the money that his father left, you know. And then instead of coming back to, to keep studying the medicine, he went on into music because that was his vida, that was his life. That was his life. Came back and in the 30s, he started a group called Cuarteto Amadeo, uh, Alberto Amadeo is a whatever. Alberto was his real name, but everybody used to call him Titi, yeah. the nickname. Okay. So Titi Amadeo and his group, Grupo Amadeo was called. And then he got together with uh, the, the, the famous singers from those days, like uh, Damilita and uh, Pedro Flores, Rafael Hernández, composers like him. And from there, comes Miguel Angel Amadeo. Okay. Because when I was born, I was five months old when my father got on a boat and came back to New York. This was in the 30s. So I was next there with my mother. Okay. But somehow, us? somehow, I love music. And as a little kid, I was always trying to play an instrument with drum, you know, una lata. <laughs> you get a can, a big can, and you bang on it, and you think you're playing, you know, olvídate de, de Rey Barreto, you know, <laughs> So that's the way it started. And in Puerto Rico, when I was about, uh, what, uh, five, six, seven, eight years old. Can you talk to us about your mother? Where's she from? From Bayamón. Okay. In Bayamón, there's a barrio called uh, Barrio Piña, Barrio Piña, Tualta. And that's my, my, my father is from there, 
to my father, to my dad living by your mom. And that's where you were born and raised? And that's where I was born and raised. Do you have any siblings? Years when I came to Do you have any siblings, brothers and sisters? I you have like one. Talk? I had one brother. That's all I had. He died. Mm -hmm. He left uh, four, four sons. Hijos. Do you mind talking to us about your earliest memories in your hometown in Puerto Rico? What was it like? Ah, it was beautiful. I mean, I was always out in the street playing ball. Because I, I, that's all. When I came to New York, I was 13 years old. And as soon as I reached 16, I was already playing with, with all men in Central Park. I played with the, and the, La Liga Morinque in the Bronx. I was a very good pitcher at the time. You know, I became pretty really famous as a ball player in the, the 60s. Wow. But then music was my life. My father had a name, left me a name, because he bought a lot of music. I mean, I was young, I was boom, bakaram, boom, bakaram, boom, bakaram. All them songs from the 50, uh, 30s and, and, uh, and the 40s. Uh, in the 50s and 60s, I was already recording with artists and doing things and working in the record business. And I started taking that music from my father and, and having all the uh, artists from those years. Even Oscar de Leon, Luis Henry Gondo, all the people who were f famous in the city of the 50s. This little kid used to go and uh, try to push my father's music. <laughs> and then I, my music started, you know, being, I, I started growing as a composer and people thought that it was that my father left those songs for me. You know, you know, my father died many years ago and I'm still writing every song that says Miguel Angel Amadeo was written by me, not my father. Okay. Right. Now, your migration to the United States predates the Puerto Rican air migration that everyone is so familiar with and it's been documented. If I'm not mistaken, you came by ship. That's right. Can you talk to us about maybe the name of the ship, if you remember? Marine Tiger. Marine Tiger. Yeah. And can you Tiger talk? Marino. How long did it take? And can you talk to us about oh your experience? God. Cinco días. Five days. Cuatro noches. Wow. Five days. Nice. What were your memories on that trip so long? Well, it wasn't because uh, we had to. I was only uh, 13 years old and I had to sleep away from my, my mother. I came with my mother. Was to, and it was, they, they separated me with the men, and there was uh, sections. Like, like if you were. Uh, People that we have here now. Oh, the immigrants. The immigrants, yeah. Well, they say I'm immigrant. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But once I, we got to New York, we had family here. My, my oldest brother, my only brother, Alberto, was already here. So he he was the one that guided us. Into it. And then he, he took me over to meet my father for the first time. Wow. I was already 14 years old and met my father. Wow. Now, never lived with, together with him, but I knew about his music because he, he was very famous in the 30s and 40s. Wow. And I liked music so much that I knew almost every song that he wrote. Every time that I had it, like he said, my head, I want to learn and I used to think, uh, and go and play. And he played the guitar at that time. Now, you were 13 years old when you came over, so right. what did you, how did you find out you were coming to the United States, and how did that feel? My mother was always trying to uh, talk to me about my father, who might have never met. So I was, you know, like I said, I was five months old, and she, he abandoned my mother with my brother, who was three years old when he left Puerto Rico, and I was five months old. I've been 34, I was born. You know? And I 
think we made it. So, you know, I, it was it was it was rough for my mother. Got it. But I, but I, I had the talent in me, I guess. Today I'm considered one of the best in Puerto Rico. Luego de apurado two pages thanking me for what I'm doing. You know, as a composer, musician. Right. For the Puerto Rican uh, people, girls. Right, right. Fernando, everybody talks about me. Colombia, they know me. Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Panama, everybody. And they, everybody offers me, you know, trips to go there. They will take care of me. I went to, the only one that I accept was Santo Domingo. I went there and then they gave me class, which I have here and all that. And I spent a uh, weekend, I had on the way to they took me to the radio station, I got on the, on the air from the, from the Capitan. And uh, I, we had a lot of call. Anthony Hill in Planet Cancer was one of the first ones who called me. And this said, like uh, Roberto Canario, uh, uh, a whole lot of people, everybody comes here. They come here from all over South America, Oscar de Leon, we call it one of my father's songs, because I keep pushing my father's music. Right. Yeah. I get the Ochavo también because <laughs> my father is this. Right. He could give it to me when I was a little boy, and now I'm going to get it from her. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. So, Southern Music, which is the company that uh, represents him. Now you're 13 years old, and what you arrived on the Marine Tiger. Your brother met you. No, he. When we came, we came to uh, I think it was 40th Street, in the Hawks, uh, in Hawks, the, the, the boat that boat I see on it uh, was. Uh, I came by boat, and uh, he was there waiting for us. Great, he had, great. He took care. Uh, he, he took care of us. That's awesome. Yeah. Where, where did you first live when you got to New York City? 225 East 110th Street, between 2nd and 3rd. And it was uh, El Barrio Italiano. Wow. They have no problems. Okay. All right. Although it's a little dark skin, you know, but they. And what was your first neighborhood here in the Bronx that you first moved to? 786, uh, 826, Hill Place. Wow. Right behind, uh, right here. What year was that? 1947. As soon as I got to, uh, to New York, my brother took, us, to, took care of us for the first six months. Then I came in the summertime. My daughter, then uh, the next, uh, Two, three, four months later, I moved to eight, uh, 26 Hillwood Place. My aunt had an apartment there with three, one, two, three, four bedrooms. Okay. Wow. And she told my mother, don't you worry. You bring in Negrito. I was in Negrito. Okay. You bring in Negrito, and uh, I'll empty one of the, the rooms for you. And that's when I came to this talk for the first time, it was 1947. I was going by, I was going to take the train because I was, when I came to, for, from uh, Puerto Rico, uh, I went to Galvani, PS83, 109th Street, which is second and third. Galvani, did you ask me? So I went there. And from there, my, I used to live with my brother. It wasn't easy, you know, it was very rough. So as soon as my my aunt, when I saw the way we were living, the way we were living, she opened up an old room for us and I moved here. Going into the train there every day, five cents. A nickel, and I would take me to school every morning and come here. 
coming off that train, I heard, I, I stopped here and I heard la canción Julito Rodríguez Reyes, Siete Besos, Siete Besos, nada más. <laughs> Esa canción que Julito Rodríguez me dio. When I heard that, I looked at the and I said, oh, okay, I went crazy. So I went home around the corner and I told my uh, cousin, that is, look, uh, I, I would love to go there and you know, you see that little booth there, that little space? Yeah. The, they had a, a machine there. You would take a 78 record, you put it going there, and you play your own records. Doña Victoria, Rafael Hernandez's sister, was the one that sold it to me. And here, I met Rafael Hernandez, who used to hang around, you know. I was crazy because I knew how Rafael Hernandez was big. <laughs> I, I, who, at that time, I was 13, 14 years old. I mean, I, whoever thought that I was going to be the owner of a record shop that him and Victoria, his uh, sister, started in 1941. Five years, four or five years before I got here. This store. Have passed a lot of days today. I bought it off her in 1969. 50 cents, well, 54 years, huh? Wow, yeah. And then I worked 10 years with the Allegra Records around the before coming here. But I heard that this place, that Victoria went to retire, she used to live off the stairs. That's when I said, yeah, let me take advantage of this. Because <laughs> Allegra was going down, and I was managing Allegra Records. That's where I met Willy Colón for the first time, 16 years old. Wow. The other 12, they go, audition this kid and see what he has. Don Juan Tirando. I don't want to say the word, la palabra. Tirando en el aire. So, uh, that was the first one, one of the first person that I auditioned as a man here of Valerio Records. We're talking now 1960. Willie was in 1966. Right? We had Charlie Palmieri, Eddie Palmieri, uh, Caco and Sucombo. Yeah, you know. A lot of good, good musicians. And I, I was money in the company for 10 years. Wow. The owner, Al Santiago, tells me, you know so much about music, why don't you do this? Come on, work for me. I was working. At the time, I was working with ABC Paramount, and I was doing uh, night clubs on the weekend. Viene sábado, domingo. Okay? You know how much I used to get for the three days? How much? $45. Wow. $15 a day. Wow. Flamingo Club. Wow. 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 I did a record. I wanted to do a recording with uh, Alegra Records. Yeah. And you know what happened? When I did the, the when I was doing the recording, he was still like mirando at the owner. He said, Why don't you come and work for me? He tells him. I said, Look, I got a job. I got, uh, I'm working with ABC Paramount in the record department. And I also have a nightclub that I'm doing. He said, how much do you make at the nightclub? I said, well, tell you $45. $15 a night. I said, what about the, the regular job with the Tracy Bell? I said, $60, $62. So you know what? He said, okay, add that up, the 45 and I'll give you that, and come on board for me for five days. Five days. You just, he tells me, you just got married. What do you want to do? You're going to be working like three days on the music business and five days on, and she's going to be home alone all the time? Come on. So that's what happened. That's when, not really. So I went and worked for 10 years, from 1959 to 1969. I heard about this being 
on sale. Oh, I did. I got to do that. I got to quit. So that's what I think I'm going to ask. Wow. I'll be here soon. Amazing. So what has been your motivation to stay within the Bronx? And can you tell us more kind of that evolution you've seen of Latin music from when you first got here to now? The music in the Bronx was like, we had the club, the five class, we had all the dance halls like uh, Tropicana Club or yeah. uh, Hansmoita, like the Snipes on the uh, Colgate Gardens. We, we had everything here in the Bronx. I mean, the Bronx was a uh, Bronx Casino on 49th Street. We had the embassy ballroom. We had so much places in which to work. And then the, every bar had a little tarima. Mm -hmm. And we'd bring a trio every weekend. So I mean, music, they were, uh, every musician was working. Today, you see a lot of musicians are without any job. When the, there was a fire on Truman Avenue and uh, Southern Boulevard, came with the one out. Everybody died. Somebody yeah. burned up the place and all these people died. From there on, Giuliani closed every mm -hmm. night closer and the musicians in La Calle. Yeah. That's when the music really started. Yeah. Now you don't see any bars with the music. Yeah. And how has your store been kind of that preservation of that Puerto Rican culture and that Latin culture? It's all here. So you know, no dinero. Porque I was this store is to sell sixteen cents in thousand dollars in one week. Now I sell eight hundred dollars this week, but next week I might sell a thousand because of the crazy. That's not that don't pay my bills. But I like it. And what, what when it was good? I saved my money. When I took my, uh, my two sons to school. So, you know, yeah. from our college, they went to college, both of them. They are already retired. And you're still here. And I still have them. Oh, yeah. 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 And they need something. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. on. 5,000? 10,000? Oh, it's going to rain. Yeah. Gracias, Javier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I think you've got more than anybody else. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like to, when we thank you very much. We, we know how busy you are. We, uh, we like to end all of our interviews with one last question. Beginning. What does the Bronx mean to you? I thought he was going to borrow money from you. <laughs> What does the what? What does the Bronx mean to you? Oh my God, this is, uh, I love the Bronx. I came to Manhattan because it was, I had no choice. But coming to the Bronx, once I got here, I went back to, to, the, to Manhattan. Because my mother found an apartment on the 110th Street. 124 East 110th Street, and one. Across the street from there was a Casa Latina, the original Casa Latina. And that's where, at the age of 16, I would, after school, I would drop my bag and go right in there. I met there Carlos Pizarro, Raul Marrero, Juanita Ross, those people from the, and that's when I really, got involved with the music because I had, and then the record shop gave me a job I used to get two dollars a week. Wow. Two dollars a week. That was plenty of money. The, the, the train was five cents a nickel. I used to go to school for a nickel and, and, go, and go to Brooklyn. So you know a can of soup, nineteen cents. This is very show. <laughs> Campbell of soup. Chicken noodle, I used to love that. I mean, you know, I can't get over. Well, Miguel Angel Amadeo, out of Casa Amadeo, here in the heart of the South Bronx, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.
to come in and taking care of uh, uh, my people because I'm not the only one you, you see. Y estoy muerto de la risa como dice el otro. Because I think that I'm still going to be here for two more years. Así que prepárese. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you.